Paul, Paul may mention the fact that I was an Eagle Scout, and before I introduce our, our guest speaker, Richard, but all the Eagle Scouts and Girl Scout Gold Award holders, just stand, just to give Richard an idea. Of it. What what you Eagle, Scouts. Eagle, Eagle Scouts, Scouts and Gold Award. Yeah. That's great. So, so I've got Richard's bio, and I, I won't read it all in detail. Um, yes, I will. <laughs> he was born in Michigan and traveled the first six years of his life as his father was in the Air Force, just like me. Uh, upon completing high school in New Jersey, he joined the U.S. Air Force, and U.S. Navy, uh, attended Hospital Corman School in San Diego, and reported to his first duty station at Naval Medical Center in Bethesda. Spent time in Charleston, War College in Rhode Island. And after 10 years as a hospital corpsman, he changed grades to a counsel Navy counselor, reported to Arthur W. Radford, participated in several actions in the Caribbean, intercepting drug runners, and deployed as part of Desert Storm. Reported the Naval Air Station in Pensacola, and while there, he earned his bachelor's degree and master's degree in psychology. This man doesn't know the meaning of spare time. After Pensacola, he reported to the Pensacola at Little Creek, and after two deployments on board the Pensacola, he, or while there, he participated in non-combat evacuation of Albania and invasion of Kosovo. He retired after 20 years in the Navy. Thank you for your service, sir. Uh, he started working for the Boy Scouts here in Tidewater Council out in Chesapeake. He worked at summer camp as the aquatics director. He was active in the Southside Lions Club. After four years, he was promoted and transferred to the, and I'm not even going to try and say the Okanochichi Council in Raleigh, North Carolina. <laughs> uh, while there, he served as the camp director and attended Wood Badge Training Leadership. <coughs> Wood Badge Leadership Training. Came back to Tidewater in 2009 and served in Norfolk and Virginia Beach. And he's been a staff advisor for day camp advancement and training committees. He's married to Norma Jean Robinson, a graduate of Bayside High School and Excelsior College, and they have four children and five grand grandchildren. Uh, Richard Becker. Thank you for having me. I'm not the first Rotary Club I've talked to, but the first one I've talked to in a while. Uh, talked to you a little bit about scouting. It's changed a lot. Some of the core values have not changed. Not, we haven't changed in 105 years the core values of taking young men, and now, if you're not familiar with our venturing program, which has been around since 1972, it's co-ed. That program is in high school age, boys and girls. But we're taking young men and women and teaching them citizenship, good character, and leadership how to be citizens in this country. We haven't changed in 105 years. The Tidewater Council is unique. We are the fifth oldest continuously operated council in America. Other councils have folded, and the older council sometimes merges with the younger council. We have not merged. We've absorbed some back in the 20s, but we are the oldest fifth continuously operated council in America. So we have that unique distinction. Started in September 1911 over in Norfolk, and then uh, in the 90s moved to Virginia Beach, but that's about it. We serve the cities of Chesapeake, Portsmouth, Norfolk, Virginia Beach, and seven counties in North Carolina, all the way down to Haddocks. So we, that's the area we serve. When I say scouting hasn't changed, what we have changed though, Cub Scouts have changed in the last year. They've just started changed in June of this year. We've simplified the books a little bit. The real thing with Cub Scouts now is it's an adventure. Let's go on an adventure. Let's do some fun things. Cub Scouts is about supporting the family. It's about doing things as a family. When they go camping, and they do go camping three, about three, four times a year, the whole family goes camping. When they go to the zoo, the whole family goes to the zoo. It's about getting the family involved. As one mom said it not too long ago, I was going to do these activities with my family anyway. Cub Scouts just makes me schedule when I'm going to go <laughs> do these things when they're going to go to the aquarium, the zoo, the tides, the admirals, nauticus. That's some of the things. 
Cub Scouts is no longer sitting around doing uh, lots of projects. Not arts and crafts, we call them projects. Let's now, we still have that component. How many of you remember the doing the Pinewood Derby car? Oh yeah. oh yeah. I think I still have it. <laughs> Do you know that there are seven or eight SOLs in that Pinewood Derby car? Cub Scouts is a lot of learning. Standards of learning is what SOLs are. It's what the school system tests to. But that Pinewood Derby car, addition and subtraction, because it can't weigh more than five ounces, can't be a certain length, height, weight. So they got to learn how to add and subtract. They got to learn how to measure both length and weight. <coughs> how to add and subtract. They got to do project planning because they got to draw what they want it to look like and figure out how to get it to look like that. <coughs> so we're taking, realize a first grader who's six, six and a half at the youngest, and he's learning project planning, addition, subtraction, which he's not learning in school yet, but he's learning it in Cub Scouts, addition, subtraction, weights and measurements is actually a third grade SOL, and he's getting exposed to it in December, January of his kindergarten year. Simple machines, acceleration of a body in free fall, because as it goes down the ramp, we want to know how fast it goes. Coefficient of friction. How many of you talk to your sons about putting the graphite lube on the wheels? You're not showing them the math of the coefficient of friction. <clears throat> I took that class a long time ago, and I don't remember the math. <laughs> But you're teaching them the concept of aerodynamics, coefficient of friction, acceleration of body and free fall, which are high school based SOLs. So we're taking the kids in Cub Scouts and we're teaching them how to be good in school. 60% of the boys on an honor roll in any given school nationwide are in Scouts. The gentleman that stood up for Eagle Scouts. 26 of the first 29 astronauts. And every man that's walked on the moon or in that club. Currently, when, you, when most of you gentlemen went through Eagle Scouts, you got your Eagle Scout, you were told 2% made the rank of Eagle Scout. Well, I'm happy to say <coughs> the national average is now 6%. <coughs> 6% of the boys make it to the rank of Eagle. Uh, in the next coming year, Boy Scouts is changing. I sent Paul here, he's the advancement coordinator for the city of Virginia Beach, a 22-page document on the changes coming up in Boy Scouts. <laughs> That's real good reading. <laughs> uh, they're being phased in over the next, till, uh, from now until January of 2017 when they come mandatory. They're being phased in. But we're, we're changing the requirements, but still the basics are still there. <coughs> the basics of community service. We're just making them do it a little bit more community service. Looking at the 21 merit, Eagle Merit Badges, that hasn't changed. If you look at the Eagle Merit Badges, one of the required Eagle Merit Badges is personal finance. Personal management, personal, actually personal finance merit badge. I got to learn about APR, balancing a checkbook, figuring out what their credit score is. Now the school system is required to teach that. The Boy Scouts have been teaching it for two decades. Yeah, it's surprising what. If you look at your schools, I know you've got your Interact Club. And, but if you go down to the elementary school system, you see pictures in them about character development and positive character traits that they need to uh, follow. It's interesting when they let to stop letting the Boy Scouts actively recruit in the school system. Now they require the teachers to teach what we've been teaching, and what the Girl Scouts have been teaching too, about character development, positive character traits. So. That's important to think about. 
Scouting's been around teaching the, the values of respect, good citizenship, bravery, courtesy for over 105 years. When they stop letting us in the schools, we now, the schools now have to try to teach them, don't touch one another, don't touch anybody. And you hear, I hear that all the time when I walk through, go to the schools delivering flyers. Uh, that's the big one the parents, the, the teachers are saying, because they stopped letting us in. And that's what I want you to think about is, Scouting has been, is the nation's, one of the nation's oldest youth development programs. The Y has their programs, and they still have their programs. We started in collaboration 105 years ago with the Y uh, and doing these things. Developing kids, what do, you, what do we want our future of our nation to look like? Scouting is the one thing that's taking one program whether it be Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, but I'm here for the Boy Scouts, the one program that is taking that look and is trying to develop the leaders of tomorrow today. <coughs> I'm going to pick on one young lady, and I'm using her as a great example. Her name is Rachel Eddowes. Rachel's a resident of Virginia Beach. Rachel's now 22 years old. I've known her since she was 14. At the age of 14, when I first met Rachel, um, it was in a first aid class. All of us have hobbies. I work for the Boy Scouts and I teach first aid for the Red Cross. That's my hobby. I teach wilderness first aid predominantly and first aid CPR. Rachel, at the age of 14, was a very shy, retiring young lady. When she had to get up and do a presentation, and be the leader of a scenario, it's hard to get her to speak up and tell people what to do. That's not the case now, by the way. <laughs> Rachel um, is involved in both Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts. She has her gold award, and she has the Boy Scout equivalent in venturing, the silver award. She's got both awards. Uh, her project for both, by the way, was an ALS, which her father had recently passed away from, awareness program. <clears throat> Rachel went through National Youth Leadership Training, NYLT, National Youth Leadership Training that we offer here. It's a national course. We teach youth how to be leaders. She got a lot out of that course. She was so good, she went on and was recommended and went to Philmont, New Mexico to National Advanced Youth Leadership Experience, NAIL, which qualifies her to be a national instructor for NYLT. <clears throat> she came back and taught and helped teach NYLT here. They were so impressed with her at <coughs> Philmont, they invited her back to be an instructor for NAIL. It gets better. Rachel impressed the instructor staff that she came on as an assistant director at the age of 19. Wow. She was invited for the first inter-American scout uh, alliance to teach our leadership training courses to Mexico, Belize, and South American country scouting organizations. She was on the task force that helped create that course. That's how she learned Spanish, too. <laughs> okay? She's not done yet. She was selected from one of over 300 nominations to give the annual report of scouting to President Obama. We nominated her from Tidewater, and she was selected. That was three years ago. She so impressed the national staff at her uh, demeanor, her ability to speak now in public, because she's speaking to classes of 60 kids and on these leadership experiences, 48 to 60 people, that she was invited to last year's World Council on Scouting as one of five youth representatives from America. 
This past year, she has won two national awards. National Youth Leadership Award in Venturing, uh, which are only four are given out in the entire country. <coughs> and a uh, last yesterday came out last night, Wells Foundation National Award for National Youth Excellence. And she openly says she's got all that from scouting. I like to pick on her as a great example of what we can do because she's the epitome of what can happen. But the Tidewater Council teaches leadership. We have an organization, uh, it's our honor society, called the Order of the Arab. Who are members of the Order of the Arab? Okay, thank you. Two national vice chiefs have come from Tidewater Council. Preston Marquis, uh, for those of you who may remember Preston's father, former Chief of Police in Norfolk, Bruce Marquis. He served, was the first one to uh, serve as National Vice Chief. And Taylor Bob Roach of Virginia Beach just finished his tour as National Vice Chief. So we're about teaching leadership. But well, we do have one problem in scouting right now. Not to quote Will Rogers. Will Rogers says there's only one problem with scouts, not enough of them. Well, I'm going to paraphrase him. He's right, there's not enough. The national average in scouting is 14% of the boys are in scouting today. That's it, 14%. In the 60s, it was 35 to 40% from the year. That number has been steadily de decreasing. Our biggest problem areas in the cities of Portsmouth and Norfolk, less than 5% of the boys in those cities are involved in scouting. We're lucky, the city of Virginia Beach, depending upon the school, somewhere between 12 and 17%. Some schools are actually hitting 17%, but the average is close to 14 in Virginia Beach. Chesapeake, I hate to say it guys, if any of you live in Chesapeake, they hit a really great number several years ago. Great, uh, great Bridge, primary actually had 40% of the kids at one time. They were doing great a decade ago, but they're, they're, overall the city average is 14%, so they are doing very good. They're just, Great Bridge Primary doesn't hit, isn't hitting that big high number anymore. Why is scouting not popular? We don't know. We hear about people talking about sports. Well, sports are now year-round for a lot of kids. Um, the value of scouting, having that Eagle Scout Award, has got the same value to, uh, as a high school letter in a sport. But it's the one thing you can put on a resume 30 years from now that still has value. Nobody cares if you're the captain of the football team. But an Eagle Scout still has value even in your 40s. It's the one thing you can do that will really have an impact on your life. Um, for those of you who follow football, David Thornton, number 50, played for years, five, six years, is an acquaintance of mine. And that's the best I can say. I know his brother. I've met him a couple of times. He was pulled out talking about an interesting NCAA study. The average high school student has a 1% chance of making it to professional sports. 10% of the kids playing high school sports of any given sport get a college scholarship. 10%, that's it. That includes girls. That's not just boys, that's both, both sexes. Of those playing at the college level, 10% get a pro offer. It doesn't mean they're going pro, that just means they're getting offered. And what I found very interesting is, you read about these guys get these big contracts and signing bonuses, 
on draft day, right? All they get is the signing bonus. They got to go through training camp and compete. They're only allowed X amount of linebackers on the team at the final roster. They've got twice as many at training camp. So that <coughs> freshman in the NFL has got to compete against those four other guys. Well, those three other guys that they recruited and the four other guys that are coming back from last year's team for the four slots. Those guys coming back are three or four or five years older, may not be as fast off the line, but they know the sport better more. So they may get a $15 million contract and a three, $2 million signing bonus. till they make the team, they get nothing off that $15 million contract. All they get is the signing bonus. That's it. Scouting, though, <laughs> pays dividends your whole life. It has that value. But people, what do you think about when you look at it, somebody who tells you they're an Eagle Scout? They're the person you want to hire. They're the person you want to have in charge of us. I want to challenge you to help us. I've got information on your, your you've got the annual report on your desk, on your chairs. Tells you a little bit about what we're doing. About 200 scout, Eagle Scouts a year in this council. We're doing good. You can help us by participating in a couple of events we've got coming up. We have our annual golf tournament, <clears throat> Bayview Farms, one of the most exclusive clubs in the area. And we have our Darden Gala, which is not quite black tie, but getting close to that. It's an event at the Western. It's very a uh, nice event, silent auction, dancing, uh, order, heavy hors d'oeuvres, drinking, a lot of good fun. Um, different bands play, strictly business this year. We do a lot to involve the community. The, having, supporting us this way allows us to get